Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari, Judge Supreme Court. Honorable Mr. Justice Indrajit Maharshi, Chief Justice Rajasthan High Court. And Patron and Chief, Rajasthan State Legal Services Authority. Honorable Mr. Justice Sangeet Lodha, Administrative Judge, Rajasthan High Court. And Executive Chairman, Rajasthan State Legal Services Authority. Honorable Judges of Rajasthan High Court, Registrar General and Officers of Registry, Member Secretary and Officers of RALSA, Participating Judicial Officers, Mediators, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of Rajasthan State Legal Services Authority, I extend very warm welcome to our esteemed students and participants. It is our honor and privilege to have with us Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari on this webinar, which is on strengthening justice delivery system, synergy of communicatory and ADR processes. With this, I would like to request Honorable Mr. Justice Sangeet Loda to welcome our esteemed dignitaries. Honorable Mr. Justice Sangeet Loda. Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari, Judge Supreme Court of India. Honorable Mr. Justice Indrajit Mahanti, Chief Justice and Patent and Chief, Rajasthan State Legal Services Authority. My sister and brother judges of Rajasthan High Court. Brother Justice Vijay Vishnoi, Judge in Charge, Mediation Center, Rajasthan High Court. Mr. Brajendra Jain, Member Secretary, Ralsa. Ms. Poonam Dargan, Director Ralsa, Chairpersons and Secretaries, District Legal Services Authorities of the State of Rajasthan, Officers of the Ralsa, Dear Judicial Officers, Trainee Judicial Officers, Mediators, Ladies and Gentlemen, I heartily welcome all of you on behalf of Ralsa to this webinar on the strengthening justice delivery system, synergy of adjudicatory and ADR processes. We are deeply obliged and greatly honored by the presence of Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maishwari, just Supreme Court of India, with the splendor qualities of head and heart, his lordship's command, reverence from one and all. We had the privilege of seeing him as an eminent lawyer, a great judge, caring elder brother and guide. Sir, we are grateful to you for accepting our invitation to deliver the keynote address in this webinar. On behalf of Ralsa, I extend my cordial and affectionate welcome to your Lordship. Thank you. Thank you. We welcome Honorable Mr. Justice Indrajit Mahanti, the Chief Justice Chief. Rajasthan High Court and Patent Chief Ralsa, who has most graciously consented to attend this webinar. We also gratefully acknowledge the presence of sister and brother judges of Rajasthan High Court. Friends, the concerns about slow pace, high cost, procedural complexity, and lack of predictable outcomes associated with the litigation have been raised repeatedly. The picture of litigation that emerges might confirm the long-standing criticism that justice delivery system takes too long and costs too much. But the courts do not possess magic wand, which may can have wave to wipe off the huge potency of the cases, nor can they afford to ignore the instances of injustices and illegalities only because the huge areas and delaying disposal of the cases. 
if courts start doing that, it would be endangering credibility of the courts and may erode the tremendous confidence they still enjoy from the common man. To deal with such a situation, alternative dispute resolution can be a helpful mechanism which strengthens judicial modernization, unclogs the courts, increases access to justice, reduces cost, and saves time. The need to evolve alternative mechanism to reduce the burden of the courts and provide species access to justice along with revival and strengthening the traditional system of dispute resolution prompted the introduction of Section 19 in the Code of Civil Procedure 1908. Section 19, Section 89 of the Civil Procedure Code provides the opportunity of alternative dispute resolution to the pupil in the form of arbitration, conciliation, mediation, and local adalat. Out of these ADR tools, mediation is a process to resolve a dispute between two or more parties in the presence of a mutually accepted third party who through confidential discussion attempts to help the parties in reaching a commonly agreed solution to their problems. The biggest advantage of mediation is that the entire process is strictly confidential. Mediation saves time and the, and the financial and emotional cost of resolving a dispute, thereby re-establishing trust and respect amongst the parties. A properly conceived mediation as a method of alternative dispute resolution will en ensure wide access to justice for all sections of pupil. There are 169 mediation centers across the Rajasthan where 1,027 trained mediators are providing their services. The ratio of settlement of dispute through mediation in the state in preceding three, four years is more than 20% of the refer cases. The evolution of local adalas as yet another tool of ADR was a part of a strategy to relieve heavy burden on courts and the same have now assumed statutory recognition under the Legal Services Authority Act 1987. For more than three decades now, NALSA and state legal services authorities have been working towards the noble goal of providing legal aid and services to the weaker section of the society. And the local adalat are being organized under the aegis of NALSA and the legal services authorities on a regular basis. Last year, in the month of August, NALSA, under the aegis of NALSA, conducted its first ever online local adalat in the state of Rajasthan amid the restricted judicial functioning owing to, owing to COVID-19 outbreak, and the same was a giant leap in introduction of technology in the domain of dispute resolution. It was organized all over the state of Rajasthan where thousands of legal disputes were taken up for resolution, out of which 30,546 were settled, which include 29,092 cases pending in the courts and 4,384 pre-litigation cases. The first national local adalat organized by RALSA this year on 9 July was also a huge success, wherein total 2,79,979 cases were taken up, out of which 76,138 cases were settled which include 63,438 pending cases and 12,700 pre-litigation cases. The ADR movement needs to be carried forward with greater speed. 
This will considerably reduce the load on the courts apart from providing conclusive justice without substantial costs being involved. If they are successfully given effect to the goal of rendering social justice to the parties to the dispute shall be achieved in more realistic manner. I am sure this webinar organized by RALSA will definitely help to develop meaningful communication on relevant issues amongst the stakeholders and will help remove stumbling blocks which include aesthetic mindset of people, lack of positive approach and general apathy to try, try out ADR as an effective alternative to conventional dispute resolution mechanism and lack of awareness regarding enforceability and finality of resolution arrived at through ADR. Once again, I express my gratitude to Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari for his Lordship's continued support and encouragement to Team RALSA in its endeavor to achieve its motto, access to justice to all. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Now I request Honorable Mr. Justice Vijay Bishnoi, Chairperson Rajasthan High Court Mediation Cell Jodhpur for his Lordship's introductory address. Honorable Mr. Justice Vijay Bishnoi, sir. सर अनम्यूट करो सर अपने आप को सर सर अनम्यूट करो आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है सर ऑनरेबल जस्टिस विष्णुई साहब अपने आप को अनम्यूट करें आवाज नहीं आ रही है आपकी मैं कर रहा है शायद कोशिश या या शोर 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 सॉरी यस नाउ इट्स ऑडिबल यस यस सर ऑनरेबल मिस्टर जस्टिस दिनेश महेश्वरी जी जस्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया चीफ गेस्ट एंड कीनोट स्पीकर ऑन टुडेज वेबिनार Honorable the Chief Justice Indrajit Mahanti ji, Honorable Justice Sangi ji Loda, Executive Chairman Rajasthan State Legal Services Authority, my brother, judges, and sister judges of Rajasthan High Court, Excellencies in the meeting, esteemed guests, and dearest participants, greetings to all. A few days back, I learned after all this time of ragging pandemic and successive lockdowns, the pendency of the cases in courts have risen by 19% since last year. This is when the courts have been taking up urgent cases only, adding on further, there would be an N number of disputes which haven't even been reported because of the COVID protocols and traveling restrictions. This shows a worrisome picture of judicial justice delivery system in India. Let alone the pandemic, even in the times of normalcy, the pendency have been an agenda haunting the minds of adjudicators and jurists. The pending cases stood at 3.68 crore in March 2020, after which the situation has gone downhill. The prime concern here stands to be a better justice delivery. Judicial process in India itself is a little complex, so much so that general public fears the complexities, the advocate fees, the long years of pendency, more than they fear the decree or a sentence. But the procedure cannot be done away with since they in a way signifies the rectitude of judicial process. In order to make the justice delivery more efficient and to accelerate the process, the law courts in conjunction with the alternative dispute redressal techniques might serve the purpose. This thought must be discussed and developed to a well-suited solution and hence the topic of today's webinar is strengthening justice delivery system, synergy of adjudicatory and ADR process. This is not the first time the problem is being discussed. A few days back, 
Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice N. D. Ramanna, discussed about the need to have mediation as a mandatory first step for resolution of a dispute. He went on to suggest that a new law might be needed to fulfill the vacuum. I see the vacuum on a daily basis, being an adjudicator, at the same time being the in charge of mediation, Rajasthan High Court, Jodhpur, and knowing the process. I too had realized the need of a set of rules which could provide for broad principles and norms that can govern mediation. Furthermore, the stance taken by Justice D.Y. Chanchur in noteworthy is noteworthy where he gives a caveat and suggests that mediation must be exercised with a bottom-up strategy where unlike institutional culture with lawyers and judges in the center, the voices of oppressed are put forth without filter. I propose that the parties must be heard properly and they must have a chance to put forth their perils and means might be adopted to achieve such purpose, be it by themselves if they are capable or through a medium if they are not. Lastly, the power of courts and its way of working must not be looked down upon amidst the raising pendency and judicial procedure complexity uproar in the nation. The law courts in India have their own glory and they have earned faith from the people all over these years since before independence to this day. I am of the view that justice delivery cannot be separated from courts of law. The basic tenet instilled in the constitution of India is procedure established by law and the legal framework operative in India is framed in the most intricate and meticulous way. Speaking alone, the lines of Honorable CJ Shri Envi Ramana thoughts, it's a faith that people have on justice delivery through judiciary, which makes them believe that the court would come to its rescue if his her rights is violated. When my Lord Honorable Justice Dinesh Maheshwariji was judge of Rasta High Court and Chief Justice of High Court of Meghalaya and Karnataka, his lordship words of uh, work to strengthen justice delivery system under his lordship guidance, Bangalore Mediation Center started working full time and his idea of access to justice to the marginalized section suggests that the notion of mediation and ADR is an intelligent way of justice delivery and it has gradually attained validation from the distinguished member of judiciary. I feel my lords, after years of experience in the field, would be able to scrutinize the situation in the most precise way and enlighten us with his insightful thoughts. In fact, the genesis of ADCR, ADR and the mediation is from the law and legal process in India, section 89, CPC being the origin and the ultimate aim behind such provision being lesser burden on courts and comfortable judicial delivery. Therefore, the bottom line is that there is a need to bring courts of law and mediation to common grounds so that their value, virtues can be conjoined and they can work in cooperation in order to achieve proper justice delivery. I would end my speech here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are honored to have with us our patron and chief, Honorable Mr. Justice Indrajit Mahanti sir. Now, I would like to request our patron and chief for his words of wisdom. Sir, we can't hear you. My mic is on. I'm still inaudible. Yes, sir. Now you're audible. Yes. Now we are okay. audible. Okay. My Lord Justice Dinesh Maheshwari Ji, my Lord, we welcome you home. And we welcome you to our midst to once again listen and uh, to your Lordship's kind address. My Lord Sangeet Ji Lodha Ji, my brother, Administrative Judge and Executive Chairman of RALSA, 
my brother justice vijay bishnoi ji chairman judge in charge of the rajasthan high court mediation center sri brijendra kumar jain member secretary ralsa director and all of the ralsa family judicial officers from all throughout the state of rajasthan my brothers and sisters in the judiciary i think today is a red letter day in the context of having with the, in our midst justice maheshwari who for whose speech we eagerly await to learn from and uh, while welcoming you sir i earnestly uh, request your lordship and i representing my colleagues and the entire judiciary at rajasthan uh, we are here to learn from each other's experiences and the process of learning is a never ending process i am only grateful to sangeet ji and to justice maheshwari for having given us this opportunity to learn thank you sir we look forward to learning i have nothing further to say my brother justice bishnu has already introduced the topic my brother justice sangeet ji lord has already addressed everything else and i am just watching on the clock we little 5 minutes late so justice maheshwari ji we await eagerly for your lordship's kind address <laughs> thank you lordship now the time has come for which we are waiting since morning i would like to request honorable mr justice dinesh maheshwari sir for his lordship's keynote address honorable mr justice dinesh maheshwari sir thank you thank you madam a very good morning to all my team brother Justice uh, Indrajit Mahanti, Chief Justice Arfan, my esteemed brother, Sangeet Raj Lota, and uh, the colleague judges of Rajasthan High Court, the learned uh, member secretary, State Legal Services Authority, and his uh, team at the authority. and above all my dearest uh, judicial officers uh, of rajasthan ladies and gentlemen no words of thanks uh, i can express uh, to the rajasthan high court and uh, the state legal services authority who having uh, given me this opportunity to be Uh, with you uh, virtually of course uh, by this uh, medium and mode uh, this uh, pious day of uh, guru purnima where we all bow to all our uh, gurus the teachers and uh, brother justice manthi has uh, tersely but uh, very aptly put just uh, one line for all of us to remember that uh, we all are learners we continue to learn we continue to learn from and for that matter we learn from each other then we learn from our surroundings then we learn from ourselves also and uh, that is how the life goes on and the li- and we go on progressing friends uh, the today's topic brother justice sangeet raj lora had been in discussion with me about uh, and uh, the idea was not only to talk about the importance or the relevance of alternative dispute resolution mechanisms or for that matter any competition uh, between adr processes and uh, the regular judicial processes but uh, to remind ourselves about the requirements which are ingrained in our systems where both these uh, mechanisms whatever varieties are there with us in the procedures made available to us since generations to ensure that uh, these processes 
when we as judicial officers are required to deal with them, they do not pose any competitive or overmarching scenario for us, but we look at their synergy, their collaboration, their alliance, so that the ultimate goal of delivery of justice is ensured. That's why we chose this topic of synergy of these mechanisms, the collaboration of them, and particularly for we, the judicial officers, as to how to go about it. And for that matter, well, appropriate it would be to just have a look at the background, our ethos, our past, and then as uh, aptly put by Brother Justice Vishnoi, that whatever we do is still, it cannot be separated from the regular courts of law. The delivery of justice is ultimately the concern of the court, and for that matter, when it is a concern of the court, anybody who is presiding over a particular court, a particular forum, well, the responsibility is definitely onerous. Then the responsibility definitely is required to be understood in the manner that in the name of looking for the proper mechanism, we do not lend the cause or the persons or ourselves into more of questions, more of disputes rather than of resolutions. For that, the, for that matter, the synergy is definitely required to be ensured that these systems, whatever be the system, they do not cut across each other or they are not overlapping each other but they proceed together and together when they proceed and we are able to ensure that there is no conflict. There is nothing like alternative, even if the name ADR A stands for alternative. Well, this is all of Alliance. Friends, Seneca, uh, a Rom Roman Stoic philosopher, said tersely that excess in anything becomes a fault. Excess in anything becomes a fault. We, we always learn this as uh, we know in our uh, mother terms, particularly in Rajasthan, we also say we are reminded by our teachers, our parents also, ati har cheez ki buri hoti hai. Well, we do, we do, we, we have to ensure that uh, we do not overdo anything. At the same time, we cannot afford underdoing the requirements of the ADR mechanisms. So we cannot allow our systems to be deprived of the advantages of ADR mechanisms. Again, therefore, we look at the synergy without underdoing or overdoing anything. Friends, uh, Aristotle in politics posed a question. He asked uh, if uh, it was better to be ruled by the best leaders or the best laws. Aristotle found uh, advantages and disadvantages to both these methods of governance, but in the end posited that the people should be governed by the best laws as opposed to the best leaders with the reasoning that the laws were carefully thought out and could be applied to most situations and they were more appropriate for the most societies. Whatever be the system of otherwise governance, if you have the best of the laws, 
well, the governance is bound to be smooth or is likely to fall in place even if there are any fault lines. Moving on, friends, uh, to the requirements of a magistrate, uh, that is uh, how it was put, uh, magistrate being a generic term, uh, any judicial officer, the requirement of a judicial officer being there. Cordelia in Arthashastra has reminded us of uh, the laws of uh, fishes, the Matsya Nyayam system, where the that proverb of fishes, where the big fish devoured the little during the periods of drought. And it was uh, stated that, well, whenever there is an absence of a magistrate, the strong will swallow the weak, but under his protection, the weak resists the strong. As it was said, Maliyam Avalam Hi Grasate, Dandhara Bhave. If uh, Dandhar is not available, well, the tendency would be of the stronger swallowing the weak. Existence of law to deal with a particular cause and uh, simultaneous existence of meaningful administrator to ensure adherence, adherence to such laws has thus been highlighted and underscored by every relevant thinker and philosopher. Friends, uh, existence of law or rules alone would never suffice. Its enforcement, whenever it is found wanting, the result would be as good as non-existence of such laws. When we are looking at our past, it would be easy to remind ourselves of the great lessons available in our Smritis, particularly, where administration of justice was one of the most important and obligatory function of a sovereign, as it was indicated. The Smritis stressed that the very object with which the institution of kingship, kingship we can substitute for our understanding uh, being that of the sovereign uh, when uh, in our people's republic, the people are the sovereign, but the principles could definitely be understood from the Smritis. The very object, as it was indicated in Smritis was, of this institution of sovereignship was conceived and brought into existence was for the enforcement of dharma by the use of the might of the state and also to punish the individuals for contravention of dharma and to give protection and relief to those who were subjected to injury and in whose favor the law stood. The Smritis emphasized that it was the responsibility of the, of the sovereign to protect the people through proper and impartial administration of justice. And it was more than once re-emphasized that such impartial administration of justice alone would bring peace and prosperity all around. It was cautioned that any indifference towards this function would bring calamity to the state and to the people. The rules of dharma were meant to regulate the individual conduct in such a way as to restrict the rights, liberties and interests of an individual as regards all matters to the extent necessary in the interest of other individuals, that is the society, but at the same time making it obligatory for the society also to safeguard and protect the individual in all respects through its social and political institutions. That is how Smritis would teach us. I'm coming back to that in a moment before that. With this preface, uh, 
when we switch on, I, I just intend to switch on to ourselves to correlate some of the basic points which uh, we need to discuss today. As is being indicated by Brother Justice Lodra also and other speakers also. The delays in administration of justice, delays in the seasons, delays in a final adjudication in a cause is itself has always been a cause of concern. Now it is now not it's not uh, a matter of lengthy discourse that uh, delay in determination of a cause before uh, us practically renders the law and the rules meant for that cause redundant and rather otios. We revert back to that very well the 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 Matsumiya system, the rules of uh, the 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 principle. The, Mm. Proverb of fishes. I do not wish to repeat that rhetoric also that justice delayed is justice denied. However, one particular observation of uh, a learned judge of the Supreme Court, I am tempted to recite. It was in the case of uh, Daya Prashad versus uh, Pradeep Srivastava. 2001 to SEC 604. There a suit for eviction uh, on the ground of bona fide requirement of carrying business by the landlord's son proceeded for many years. And during pendency of the suit, the son joined a service and then decree for eviction was challenged on the ground that the son had joined the service. Uh, the requirement no longer exists. The Supreme Court said in that case that existence of bona fide requirement was to be determined uh, in reference to the date on which the petition was filed. And the subsequent event uh, would be considered only when the requirement or the need was fully satisfied. But that's not the point. The point is in that decision, in that context, while taking note of the effects of long pendency of litigation, the Supreme Court Interally assent, and I quote The judicial tardiness for which unfortunately our system has acquired notoriety causes the list to creep through the line for long, long years from the start to the ultimate termini is a malady afflicting the system. During this long interval, when many, many events are bound to take place, which might happen in relation to the parties as well as the subject matter of the list. If the cause of action is to be submerged in such a subsequent events on account of the malady of the system, it shatters the confidence of the litigant, despite the impairment already caused. What I'm emphasizing, friends, is the other paragraph in this judgment. And we need to remind ourselves, we need to continuously go on reminding ourselves. The uh, the effects. The court said the time is running out for doing something to solve. And mind you, this was in the year 2001. The time is running out for doing something to solve the problem which has already grown into monstrous form. If a citizen is told that once you resort to legal procedure for realization of your urgent need, you have to wait and wait for 23 to 30 years. What else is it if not to, and that is very significant, inevitably encourage and force him to resort to extra legal measures for realizing the required reliefs? A republic governed by the rule of law cannot afford to compel its citizens to resort to such extra legal means, which are very often contra legal means which with with counterproductive results on the maintenance of law and order in the country friends the dangers of denying justice at the relevant point of time or within reasonable time 
could not have been more seriously put in words by the Supreme Court. And we remind ourselves again, it was way back in the year 2001. It's not that justice delayed only denies justice. It leads to very many other maladies, the problems, and that tends to hit at the very root of the orderliness in the society. Orderliness, it's agreed to by everybody around the globe, is essential to the growth and development of a nation. For the rule of law to succeed, we had to strengthen the systems of delivery of justice. In our country, justice is mandated by the Constitution. The preamble avows of justice, social, economic, and political. But then, friends, we cannot think of delivering justice as a single dimensional exercise in resolving disputes alone. Conflict is a feature found in all societies. And how methods are developed to tackle is unique to them. And to the social, uh, to the socio political and economic conditions of the time. But in the in our context, in the context of our country, the question of setting up a system that delivers speedy, reliable, and affordable justice to more than uh, 1.3 billion people, that itself requires complex and at the same time, at the, at the same time a nuanced approach. Delivery of justice involves everyone from the person mopping the floor to the lawyers, to judges, police, legislature, and uh, to the people who have laid their faith in us to act as impartial adjudicators. Friends, to continue the rule of law is to ensure delivery of justice. It would then not be inappropriate to reiterate that our trajectory as a nation is going to be determined by how we act in discharging our functions as adjudicators. With this, friends, uh, I'm tempted to revert back to our ancient systems. When we are talking about ADRs as one of the methods of ensuring delivery of justice to all, ancient Indian jurist, jurists uh, they bestowed great attention in involving the law governing the administration of justice. The provisions were made on the description of the highest court to be located at the capital city of the lower courts under royal authority and the people's court recognized as having the power to decide cases. It is the people's court I'm particularly emphasizing on, as you would notice. The qualifications of judges and the officers of the courts were prescribed the appointment of experts as assessors to assist the court on technical questions was also provided. A code of conduct for judges and other concerned in the administrative justice was also provided. Significantly, for our understanding, a look at the acclaimed disparities uh, like those of Katyayan, Narad, Braspati brings to fore the important topic of gradation of courts where it was provided that the court presided over by the king again you can substitute king for the sovereign was the highest court there were other courts some of them were appointed by the king and the others were people's court recognized by the smritis as having the power to administer justice they were the courts of Kul, 
In English, they would write it Kula, K U L A. Shani, Gana, Gana, as they would be writing it. Adhikrita, and then Ripa. Rip, that is the king himself. These were invested with the powers to decide cases, and among them, each of the court mentioned later was superior to the one mentioned earlier. Looking a bit deeply into the significance of the people's courts, Kulla was an assembly of impartial persons belonging to the family or caste of the litigants, functioning as panchayat dars or panchayat mandali to decide dispute among those belonging to the same family or caste. That was the court of Kul, Kula. Shreni was the next court. That was the court of the court consisting of the, that was basically a corporation of the persons following the same craft, profession or trade. Gan, the Gana was the assembly of the persons belonging to one place, but to different castes. The concept of the parties to the dispute settling their disputes in a binding manner by reference to a person or persons of their choice or the private tribunals, as was well known to the ancient and the medieval India. The studies of Smritis would uh, remind us, by the way, friends, uh, about uh, the, the, the traits, the requirements of a judicial officer, the oath uh, to which we all ascribe to. Uh, they are found in Dharmakosha, like all these requirements of a judicial officer, we should be away from Rag, Lob, Hay. Dvesh. And the, the fifth one was very significant when, when the, the, these were the traits indicated as to when uh, a judge uh, may not be considered partial or may not be considered impartial, I mean, and uh, it may give rise to the charges of a partiality. I mean, uh, it was indicated that these were the five features, rag that is affection, lobe that is greed, bhai that is fear, dvesh that is ill will, and then the fifth one was very significant, that was described as vadinoshya rahashruti, that was the judge meeting and hearing a party to a case secretly. We, we, we would, we would uh, uh, appreciate the oath which we take that has its uh, roots in uh, our fundamental legal systems. The same thing when we, we, we take an oath of a, that we affirm that we would be functioning without affection or in will, uh, without fear or favor. So, friends, uh, I would definitely request the State Legal Service Authority and also the State Judicial Academy, the, the High Court, all to work again in synergy and uh, to have in our discourses some of those fundamental principles which we find are not suddenly taken up and inserted by way of some provision like Section 89 CPC. They have their well-established roots in the smritis, the, 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 the legal treaties, the fundamental legal systems. We have, of course, developed on them, on them with passage of time and uh, with uh, the requirements.
I may at this juncture, friends, before an overview of various ADR mechanisms in place, refer to a decision of, of the Privy Council, Privy Council uh, duly recognizing the value and worth of village panchayats and essentially an informal but uh, not binding form of justice delivery mechanism. The pertinent study would be of uh, the case of Sitanna versus Viramna, reported in the AIR 1934 Privy Council, phase 105. That particular case involved uh, complex questions of fact including the question as to one of the person was adopted as uh, Elatum son-in-law, uh, as we, we know, Garjavai. That, uh, that particular Garjavai system uh, custom was recognized in uh, Kama castes of, and, and Reddies in Madras, in Madras presidency. That particular uh, case uh, involved several of the complex uh, questions about the property rights. But the significant part was that there was an award made by the panchayat and in compliance thereof, a conveyance deed uh, was executed in favor of that alleged Garjavai. I'm not dilating on various other questions of facts and law of succession, uh, which I'm sure the learned officers uh, would take trouble to go through if you are tempted to, and uh, I hope you would look into it. The interesting point for our discussion is that in the appeal to the High Court, uh, one of the judges of the division bench of High Court, Madras High Court, came to the conclusion that uh, the Panchayat's award was a bona fide settlement of dispute, which was binding on the estate represented by the widow who had executed the aforesaid conveyance in favor of that Garjavai. The Privy Council, mind you, it is 1934. The Privy Council agreed with that reasoning and in that context observed as follows. I quote, the Privy Council said, a reference to a village panchayat is a time-honored method of deciding disputes of this kind and has these advantages that it is generally comparatively easy for the panchayat dars to ascertain the true facts and that, as in this case, it avoids protracted litigation which, as observed by one of the witnesses, might have proved ruinous to the estate. Looking at the evidence as a whole, their lordships see no reason, that is what the Privy Council said, their lordships see no reason for doubting that the award was a fair and honest settlement of a doubtful claim based on legal and moral grounds. And, and are therefore of the opinion that there are no grounds for interfering with it. Friends, uh, ordinarily in our justice delivery systems, a particular award, a particular decision has to be based on the legal grounds. And uh, we are trained to imbibe that moral grounds as such if not standing in tandem with the legal grounds, may not be justifying a particular award or a particular decision. But when uh, it's a matter of panchayat, when it's a matter where a person is remaining answerable, not only to his family or to himself, but to the society at large, the immediate society to which he belongs, the moral grounds also play a definitive role. And friends, these are those grounds which 
as we, we know, we see. Well, they play their own role in uh, ADR mechanisms. Why I am refer why I have referred to this 1934 decision of Privy Council and to Smritis is broadly to indicate that it is not that ADR mechanism is a particular procedure or a process which we have been handed down only by way of Section 89 CPC or by way of state legal services authorities or by way of local audits, etc. These are the systems ingrained in the overall justice delivery systems of our society. Proceeding further, from 1934, we may, we may look at some of the other developments. It's not that it's a alternative dispute resolution mechanism is uh, something known only to the Code of Civil Procedure. We remind ourselves of the Industrial Disputes Act 1947. The first avenue in uh, the later part of our codified laws where conciliation was effectively introduced and recognized by the law statutorily as an effective method of dispute resolution in relation to the disputes between uh, workers and the management. The provisions in uh, the ID Act well made it attractive for the disputing parties to settle the disputes by negotiation and failing that through conciliation by an officer of the government before resorting to the litigation. That was 1947. Family laws, the later development, has been recognized by the Family Courts Act, which provides for social welfare organizations to help the family courts, permanent counselors being there. We when we when we study section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure, as I've been uh, emphasizing and we all know as the students of law that Code of Civil Procedure is a study of the entire code as a whole. We cannot understand the system of the code by picking up one section alone or one provision alone. Even for the purpose of ADR systems also. When we, before even going to this uh, section 89, we remind ourselves, friends, that Order 32, capital A was inserted to the Code of Civil Procedure by a 1976 amendment, making provisions for the suit relating to the matters concerning the family. Rule 3 therein made it obligatory for the court to make efforts for settlement. Interestingly, the expression used therein is, if in any such suit or proceedings at any stage, it appears to the court that there is a reasonable possibility of a settlement. And that is, these are the very important and key words reasonable possibility of a settlement between the parties, the court may adjourn the proceedings for such period as it thinks fit to enable attempts to be made to effect such a settlement. It appears to the court that there is a reasonable possibility of settlement. Friends, uh, switching on from, uh, proceeding further, I mean from uh, 1976, we go to Section 89, we have been reading it uh, all along, all through. 
understanding about the different ADR mechanisms, arbitration, conciliation, judicial settlement, mediation, and of course, read with the FCON's decision, which uh, all of us are aware of, have been reading and rereading it to understand the nuances of the ADR mechanism and how to apply them. Friends, uh, it is not uh, my idea to dilate on Section 89 as such or on the different mechanisms, but I intend to emphasize on the very first opening expression of Section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure. When we look at the settlement of disputes outside the court, when do we look at it is where it appears to the court that there exist elements of a settlement which may be acceptable to the parties. Elements of settlement again, we read them with the reasonable possibility of settlement, the expression used in Order 32, Capital A. Elements of settlement, they all are to be appearing to none other but the, to the court. And here lies uh, the requirements of uh, a judicial officer who is uh, the presiding officer of the court as to how to look at the reasonable possibility of a settlement or as crisply put, elements of settlement in section 89. The court, Order 10, Rule 1A, 1B, 1C, all of us have been reading it. When uh, the parties and uh, really reading it with FCON's judgment as to what is basically required of uh, us to do as to whether we are drawing as such uh, a settlement proposal or not, FCON says no. We will look at a reasonable possibility of settlement, the element of settlement, and then refer them to either those kind of binding processes uh, like uh, arbitration or to voluntary processes like mediation, etc. Here, in our understanding of, uh, if, uh, for, to, to complete the picture about the various venues where ADR mechanisms have been indicated institute have been provided for statutory. We remind ourselves of Legal Services Authority Act also, particularly where local adalets have been given now a statutory recognition and a settlement arrived at the local adalets has been the given the has been given the force of decree which can be executed through the court. We have been reminding ourselves about the advantages of alternative dispute resolution mechanisms also that they are cost effective, less expensive, I mean, uh, less time consuming, free from the technicalities of the court. The parties are free to discuss their differences of opinion without any fear of disclosure. Uh, there is no uh, losing or winning feeling among the parties. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they are satisfied that uh, the grievance is redressed. And as we are reminded of, the relationship of the parties is preserved. All these trends uh, take us to understand as to what kind of matters are fit to be sent for ADR mechanisms. Uh, regarding that, again, FCON decision is a basic guide on which all of us have been proceeding. We are reminding ourselves about the impediments to settlement also. 
that uh, when we look at the elements of settlement, the impediments uh, like uh, poor communication, the need to express emotions, different views of facts, different views of legal outcome, constituency pressures, linkage to other disputes, where a particular party is situated and what are the particular goals of the party. For a judge recommending an ADR procedure, the questions regarding these barriers to settlement are required to be gone into. One of the features uh, a judicial officer always required to bear in mind is which, which may be militating against any use of ADR. First is that one or more of the parties uh, may be incapable of negotiating effectively. That uh, disparity plays a major role in the standing of the parties. The other features could be where the court procedure would be essential when serious questions of compliance or discovery would be involved. But then basically, for a judicial officer, there would be two lines of inquiry. What are the disputants' goals in making a forum choice? And if at all the disputants are uh, amenable to settlement, what are the likely obstacles to that settlement? These all features, why I am emphasizing key spreads, are required to be looked at, gone into, and understood by all of us, any individual judicial officer, in uh, whatever capacity or grading is working, right at the Judicial Division Court up to the Supreme Court. Well, we have to be clear about that these are the features required to be looked at, to be understood, to be weighed before we put a particular matter in the process in, the, in any of the ADR mechanisms. There can't be, there is no cut and dry formula, there is no straight jacket. Even these inquiries, which uh, I had indicated may not lead to a clear answer as to the question of forum and as to whether the person matter should go to ADR or not. But then these inquiries for a judicial officer when dealing with a particular cause well clarifies so many of the aspects, clarifies the fundamentals of the cause itself, the litigation itself which would be helpful in ensuring that ensuring that final delivery of justice, whether via ADR mechanism or ultimately by the court's order, as we know very many times, it, it does happen when a matter goes to mediation, the ultimate settlement has to have the stamp of the court. For that matter, we remind ourselves of the requirements of Order 23.3 again, for the Code of Civil Procedure. The court has to be satisfied that the matter has been settled by way of a lawful compromise. Whether it is a lawful compromise or not is again a matter to be decided by the chair, by the presiding officer, by the person holding the seat of justice. Friends, uh, FCON decision, I need not. Uh, Elaborate on, we all know that uh, the Supreme Court indicated how Section 89 is to be operated and uh, what are the categories of cases which are normally considered to be not suitable for ADR processes and the category of cases which are considered normally suitable to the ADR processes like uh, not suitable matters like uh, like those of uh, 
representative suits, dispute relating to election to the public offices, cases involving grant of authority by the court after inquiry, like uh, the suit for grant of probate or letters of administration, cases involving serious and specific allegations of fraud. I I'll come to the question of fraud a, a, a little bit later. Uh, questions that are cases requiring protection of courts, for example, the claims against minors, DTs, mentally challenged, and the suit for declaration of title against the government, and the cases involving prosecution for criminal offenses. Uh, the board also indicated which are indi which are considered suitable, like the disputes relating to contracts, specific performance, custom consumer disputes. Uh, we, we remind ourselves of the uh, the the liberal provisions made in the consumer protection laws also uh, dispute between developers, builders, customers, landlords, tenants, insurers, insured uh, cases arising from strained or sold relationships, including the dispute relating to matrimonial causes, maintenance, custody of children, etc. All the cases relating even to tortious liability, including the claim for compensation in motor vehicle cases. Friends, uh, after FCON, there had been uh, several further developments on law, particularly in relation to the different mechanisms. And I, today, I am tempted to refer to one of the recent decisions of the Supreme Court. In the case of Avital Post Studios Limited versus HSBC PI Holdings Mauritius Limited, 2020 SCC Online uh, 656. I couldn't find this particular judgment having been printed in any of the record law journals, but SCC Online it is available 656. In that case, uh, the court was dealing uh, with the question as to whether the allegations of fraud can be adjudicated in arbitration. And that's a very significant decision. Or whether they require adjudication in the court, it's the questions of fraud. The court has laid down in clear terms that to determine whether the dispute involving the allegations of fraud is arbitrable and when it would require adjudication, when it would be arbitrable and when it would require adjudication before the court. It has been held that as long as the arbitration agreement is found to exist, mere allegations of fraud or initiation of criminal proceedings would not render the disputes to be non arbitrary. It's only in those cases, those rare situations, where the contract containing arbitration clause is found to be void, that the arbitration clause would also cease to exist. Interest allegations of fraud by one of the parties merely render the contract voidable under Section 17 of the Contract Act and applying the principles of separability of uh, arbitration clause or agreement from the underlying contract. Parties cannot be permitted to avoid arbitration merely on the basis of such allegations of fraud. The court referred to uh, the decision in uh, the, the other recent decisions in the case of uh, Rashid Reza versus factor, and it was held that there was a distinction between uh, serious allegations of forgery or fabrication in support of the plea of fraud as opposed to simple allegations. And there's a beautiful distinction make, made about uh, made about this serious allegations of forgery and simple allegations. And it was held that whether the plea well, permeates the entire contract and above all the agreement of the arbitration rendering it void and whether the allegations of fraud touch upon the internal affairs of the party's intercy having no implications on the public domain. After noting such judgments, uh, the Su Supreme Court said that the serious allegations of fraud would arise only if either of the two tests were satisfied and not otherwise. In uh, Avian, uh, the Supreme Court has uh, pointed out that the FCON decision, as also the later decision in uh, Booz Allen, uh, 
uh, should now be read subject to the rider that the, in the same set of facts may lead to civil and criminal proceedings. And if it is clear that the civil dispute involves the question of fraud and misrepresentation, which can be subject matter of such proceedings under section 17 of the Contract Act, or the tort of deceit, the mere fact that the criminal proceedings can or have been instituted would not lead to the conclusion that a dispute ceases to be arbitrary. That is reinforcing the seriousness of the law of arbitration and its enforceability. The court repeated, the court uh, held that there can be a there, there can be a distinction between a contract obtained by fraud or the performance of contract being initiated by fraud. The second category of fraud which vitiates the performance of the contract and would be governed by the tort of deceit leading to a claim of damages and not of recession of contract itself. However, the court held that both kind of frauds are subsumed within the expression fraud when it comes to arbitrability of an agreement which contains an arbitration clause. Friends, this, this and other decisions and the development of law makes one thing clear, that when there are alternative mechanisms either agreed to by the parties, arbitration here in this case, or where the court would see that alternative mechanisms are required to be resorted to, well, we do allow or rather we do put the battle in the process of ADR mechanism, particularly like that of arbitration. But when sending the matter to mediation, well, the requirements are that it is all for the chair, the judicial officer to take into account all those elements operating for or against a reference to mediation and then only well, refer the matter to mediation, not referring the matter just for the sake of referring it or just for the sake of well, sending it out of our well, regular process of the delivery of justice in the court and out of the regular proceedings. The time spent, as we are told, as we are, we are remind ourselves, the time spent in an unnecessary mediation, well, that is a, that is essentially counterproductive for the of the purpose for which we all are looking at the ADR mechanisms. If a matter cannot, it doesn't have the elements of settlement. It is not sent to the ADR mechanism. We do not send the matters to ADR only for the purpose of sending it or only for the purpose that well we feel it that there is a bounden duty to send it there is definitely a bounden duty to examine that but what is to be examined are the elements of settlement the reasonable possibility the reasonable chances of settlement and for that the parties the nature of the parties as also the nature of dispute the nature of cause other things always required to be looked at, examined thoroughly by us. And that is why we remind ourselves again and again, particularly when we are, whether, 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 we, whether we are dealing with the matter at the trial level, at the original level, or we are dealing with the matter at the appellate level, to be very sure of uh, the issues arising for determination uh, at the trial level and uh, the points for determination arising at the appellate level. Once we are sure as to what points are arising, we are sure about the parties, the, the respective goals of the parties, the respective standing of the parties, the disparity of the approach of the parties. But at the same time, those elements where they could be made to converse, converge on a solution. Looking for the solution, the standing of the parties as also the nature of cause. There are certain causes which do require ultimately an adjudication by the court. And even, even if uh, there are elements of settlement 
or which we may be jumping on or we may suddenly find uh, on the surface of it we may ultimately find that uh, even those elements uh, will not uh, be sufficient would not suffice because ultimately even for the public law a decision by the court is needed particularly something like uh, the new enactments particularly like uh, new legal rights the legal and uh, the duties and responsibilities which are required to be defined by the courts in the operation of a particular statute uh, whatever be the mechanism that may not serve the purpose of the disputants as also the purpose of the society but yes uh, after this uh, filtration is uh, done by us after conscious filtration is done at the level of uh, section 89 that is at the level of uh, order 10 the examination of the parties when we consciously look at the elements of settlement spread uh, and consciously what i mean to re-emphasize is that uh, we have to examine deep not only to the cause but to the parties also and their comparative standing also and thereafter well with that, that deep examination uh, I don't send if uh, it's not going to be of a use but yes do send it when elements are there thereafter well it is uh, it is uh, the process when it, when you send it to say something like judicial settlement for which you you send the matter to uh, another uh, judicial forum uh, who can we, we, we understand because even the mediation training, uh, a lot many of our judicial officers have also been imparted with uh, the training uh, to, to, to work as mediators. So in those trainings, uh, we are given to understand the various features of the, 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 particularly the psychological features as to how do they operate and how the stumbling blocks to be taken care of to be tackled uh, the impediments to be removed and that is the, these are the um, areas of functioning of the trained mediators and for that matter mediation or judicial settlement or even low kadalat when uh, you are able to reason with particular person the party concerned and making it sure that the party concerned ultimately takes it from the entire system whether whether it is our ADR process or it is uh, the judicial determination or it is a combination and usually it has to be and it is the combination of both well the party concern ultimately takes not only the redressal of grievance but coupled with it a satisfaction and once the party takes the satisfaction well that is what we all exist for that is what we stand for. yes there is uh, there is a coronary part of it uh, i had seen uh, in mediation particularly in mediation exercises as it has been rightly indicated the honorable chief justice of india very recently again reminded of the mediation being uh, mediation being one of the most uh, well quick inexpensive and convenient method of dispute resolution in his uh, recent speech yes uh, we do uh, i had uh, thankfully i had had the opportunity to be a part of uh, mediation center as a judge in charge mediation at uh, jodhpur uh, participating in uh, those uh, mediation trainings and we found that uh, even uh, the persons who were skeptical about the utility and worth of mediation after participation in those uh, mediation trainings those 40 hours trainings uh, as they started well found themselves to be changed personalities our approach our perceptions changed uh, when uh, we started employing the tool of mediation effectively when we understood 
the effectiveness of the tool of mediation as to how it how it helps in very many very many ways friends one of the significant features i noticed was that when a matter goes to mediation but again mind you elements of settlement existing is the first requirement if the matter has come to the court we are not they, they, could, they could there could be the features of uh, pre litigation mediations also which are being done pre litigation uh, well um, uh, anything before it has entered into the court to be taken up in the mediation or lok adalat and uh, the parties coming out with the solution that is also not unknown and it is also gaining momentum and it will it would gain for the momentum what we remind ourselves what what, what was the interesting feature of mediation exercise was that when uh, we took the parties to mediation even if ultimately the mediation didn't succeed and it may not succeed for variety of reasons the interesting feature was that the parties after having gone through the mediation they themselves in their approach were the change personalities several of the misgivings were taken out several of the doubts were absorbed in that very process of mediation and that also helped even if not of a settlement by way of a mediation that helped in well deciding the matter in the court of law where several of the irrelevance were shunned off several of the asked uh, several of the unnecessary packages were taken out or left aside taken out by the system or left aside by the traveler himself that itself solves a great deal that itself helps a lot when we allow a matter to be sincerely seriously dealt with in mediation mediation is gaining momentum mediation uh, we are having good success rates also but the feature which i have noticed is that even if a settlement by way of mediation doesn't come up a sincere and a methodical involvement of a mediator and a mediation exercise not for the purpose of forcing any settlement but for the purpose of well allowing the parties to shift from their rigidity shift from their stand and to come to a particular level where at least the task of a judicial officer when it the matter goes to the court or any other adjudicator well that is eased in the manner that you are required to deal with only the material part of the material the the material propositions as as we are told when we when we are to frame the issues in a litigation we have to look at the material propositions and uh, it's a, it's a definitely a challenge for a judicial officer to well uh, sift out from the things which have been presented to all of us to look at and the find to 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 take out the material part of the propositions we we the the process are not unknown uh, friends uh, that uh, when a matter goes to arbitration even in arbitration the matters are referred to mediation and then we get a mediation settlement being presented to the arbitrator and an award coming out of that so the the point is finally that none of these processes we look at as in standing in different compartments or well detached from each other they are the part and parcel of they are united in their operation they are together and we are the judicial officers we as judicial officer take them as a whole combo pack a whole lot together and thereafter pick whatever is the best suited mechanism whatever is best suited for our for a particular cause to a particular person 
person and cause both order one and order two of the code of civil procedure that is why they stand in the first well they reign the, the ultimate the, the first they they stand at the first we we have to be sure about what the parties are means what the standing of the parties is and then what the cause is so friends uh, finally i would say in whatever capacity you are functioning and uh, some of you do function as uh, mediators also or uh, the officers uh, in the local adalat also and of course the the core work of uh, the decision in the court in whatever capacity you are functioning the synergy of all your skills is also needed the combination of the all of your skills towards uh, regular processes and the idea mechanism is needed uh, if i can put it that way a 360 degree approach a, an approach where every aspect is taken note of and none of the aspect is left aside that is needed once we are sure of that once we employ well these skills we find we will find friend why i reminded about 2001 decision and even the older decisions and the present day scenario friends ultimately it's uh, delivery of justice that is the concern of all as uh, as uh, somebody very tersely placed it Uh, during my yesterday years as lawyer when one of the lawyers uh, reminded a judge very rightly so it sir nirnay karne mein aur nyay karne mein farak hota hai so there is a obvious difference uh, between deciding a matter and uh, delivering justice yes we do decide but we do, do decide not only for statistics purposes we decide the purpose of delivery of justice and when it is delivery of justice is our concern but well, we look at the thing from every possible angle and the thereafter well choose the uh, we 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 provide for the path a particular litigation ought to take whether in the regular process or in the adr mechanism and again we remind ourselves also that this is there is no cut and dry there is no straight jacket and today a particular adr mechanism may appear to be well not workable non workable or may not be suitable for a particular matter to go but then during the progress of the matter also well we may find that well the elements of settlement has started spurting up coming up being jelly or somebody seeing a reason so uh, well these are the these are ultimately in all our files exist exist the human beings the persons and when the person is there well uh, the possibilities are infinite we always remind ourselves of those infinite possibilities and uh, thereafter well when proceeding we we keep on proceeding further well every day every day is a new day and we look for a better tomorrow uh, uh friends uh, as it was uh, i would i would conclude today uh, with uh, a very interesting saying by the uh, heraclitus uh, the great uh, greek philosopher of uh, pro socratic era era he was uh, known for his insistence on uh, the ever change or flux he aptly de- described he said that no man steps in the same river twice because it is not the same river and he is not the same man it flows it things keep on flowing that is the flux that is the law of nature that is the law of human beings so we all look for a better tomorrow we 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 ask ourselves and we tell ourselves we promise to ourselves that well every day we would look at the 
again open minded uh, for another possibility as we as judicial officers we are trained for uh, trained to make sure trained to understand that there is always another possibility so there is always possibility for a better tomorrow in uh, these uh, pandemic times well uh, where the judiciary has been uh, well making all efforts to ensure that despite all challenges delivery of justice is uh, well ensured it keeps on going uh, providing with these virtual modes or whatever methodologies at our disposal as i am as it was indicated even the online look and all that well when the online systems are there to stay and online systems are being well accepted people getting tuned to it we all getting tuned to it well even the adr mechanisms well uh, that also uh, all the mechanisms uh, are being uh, successfully or were methodically done uh, in these virtual modes in the times to come uh, well uh, that may ensure that uh, even when this pandemic is not there well the lessons which we have learned here and the new skills which we have developed here they would be of our assistance they would be or uh, they would further guide they, they would further take, take us further to do better than what we had been doing yesterday so uh, thank you so very much we look for the synergy of uh, everything around us not only the adr and the judicial processes the synergy of all our skills all our understanding well and the synergy of all of us it is uh, well uh, as has been the justice for all and uh, one for all all for one well that is what the motto always has been of our society we keep that always in mind uh, and uh, keep on proceeding further thank you so very much everybody thank you thank you lordship uh, lordship has beautifully explained that is legally and philosophically how to uh, maintain synergy between two modes of dispute resolution Aristotle has also said that mediation is an essential tool uh, for a judge as it is he who would establish equality. So I don't think there exist any doubts in the mind of our officers as Lord Fitt has uh, meticulously dealt with the topic, but a uh, few of our officers are having uh, doubts in their minds related to today's topic. So first, uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, may I open this session for question and answer, sir? Most, most welcome, most welcome. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. So I would uh, request Ravi Kanji uh, to make uh, Shri Vikrant Gupta, sir, District Judge Sirohi, uh, presenter or a panelist, so that uh, sir may ask his question. My Lord, am I audible? Is my, my voice is reaching to all? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Uh, my Lord, Honorable Justice. Audible but not visible, Mr. Vikrant Gupta. A long time not seeing you. My Lord, I am sorry for... Uh, I could not uh, uh, congratulate my Lord on being elevated to Honorable Chief yes. Supreme yes. Court. Yes. My Lord... Uh, that, that those those see for that matter well all of you are always with me and I am always with you nothing uh, nothing formal uh, between uh, any one of us uh, but yes uh, it's always uh, nice to see the judicial officers uh, is it uh, the honorable chief justice would tell us uh, whether is it that uh, all our uh, judicial officers have been uh, not allowed to switch on their video or what? My Lord, uh, uh, there, there is a limit on the number of people who can actually come on video, my Lord. I'm not technically qualified to say so. The CPC is here. We can <laughs> only have X number of people on video. But uh, the district judge at Siroi was asking the question. If he switches on the video, he, your Lordship will be able to see him. Uh, he, has, he has appeared, uh, Mr. Vikram Gupta has appeared because... Uh, yeah. yes, 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 my Lord. He is free to switch on the video. He I'm has, sure your Lordship will be able to see he, him. He has, he has, now, now he has, he has appeared. 
my lord honorable chief justice inderjit monti my lord honorable justice sangeet raj loda and all honorable judges of rajasthan high court lord chief we we all the judges of subordinate judiciary on the today's auspicious occasion lord chief of guru purnima speak the blessings first of all uh, for today uh, now my lord uh, i i have uh, been fortunate enough to go through the lecture of honorable justice r v ravindran former judge supreme court of india who has delivered the judgment of fcon lordship and a detailed lecture was given by uh, his lordship in which he has pointed out the difficulty of the judges the difficulties and reluctance of advocates difficulties and reluctance of litigants in going through the adr processes lordship being district judge i am also facing the same difficulties though which have been in detail pointed out lordship and when we are dealing with the cases in the trial court lordship there are large number of cases listed on a particular day before us lordship and we have to give enough time to almost each and every case on that day then lordship we are dealing with a case when which alternative dispute resolution can be done lordship then we find sometimes that the advocate insisted upon if brought together if the litigants brought together can have a have a meaningful dialogue but sometimes when we are asking them to come forward then they say my party is not here my party is not here we fix another day lordship and on the other day either one doesn't turn up or all doesn't turn up so the meaningful exercise which we are doing on the particular day was this lordship so this difficulty is regularly being faced by us and by the similar manner by the lawyers also who are inclined to go into the process of adr lordship this is the difficulty and uh, my lord my uh, another uh, submission would be in this regard that today the communication and technology is rising lordship earlier uh, this was not so much uh, on rise and now during the corona period we are going through the uh, online uh, online uh, discussions online hearing so can we go can we go lordship for the online online talking with the litigants and parties and advocates on the same platform as we are dealing with uh, Uh, the uh, arguments on corona period lordship because unless and until that is being provided and that facility is given to us being judicial officers we may not be able to do and use the communication technology skill which is available to us practically which is available to us and uh, it is it is being widened also lordship so some uh, sort of directions may kindly be given to each and all lordship and uh, so, um, uh, thank you mr gupta so far as uh, giving of any direction part is concerned uh, well uh, so far as i am concerned i am out of high court administration now so that can only be well commented upon or said by uh, the honorable chief justice and uh, honorable justice loda so first of all uh, i would request uh, them both or any of them to respond to Uh, some of your points, and then definitely I, I'll I'll come to it. I'll come to it. Uh, Brother Justice Monty or Brother Justice Loda, anyone would like to make any comment? I'll I'll come to Mr. Gupta's point then. No, we have we have already adopted uh, online uh, method also for the purpose of the low kadalat, and now low kadalas are being conducted by hybrid method. So it's not that the mediation also cannot be conducted in by, uh, by way of hybrid method if the party is not present obviously that can be contacted online during the process of mediation so we can adopt that so only that uh, all the centers are to be equipped for that and the process is on shortly we will be able to just establish the online uh, uh, gathers everywhere that is all uh the, uh yes uh, adding on so so mr vikram gupta that is from your administration now uh from me 
Uh, see, uh, these days you must have noticed uh, the even the proposal for uh, live streaming of the court proceedings uh, is a foot, and not only a foot. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Gujarat High Court, uh, the Honorable Chief Justice of India, inaugurated uh, the uh, the system a few days back, and uh, well. Uh, there are uh, things uh, which are uh, taking shape and progressing every day, as I said. Every day we, we are proceeding ahead. Uh, Brother Justice Loda rightly pointed out that uh, when we are having online locadalas, we are having other online mechanisms. Uh, so far as uh, uh, your this uh, query or your this doubt as to why can't you or whether whether could whether 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 you could. Uh, interact with the parties online or not. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, speaking for myself, I don't see any means problem or doubt or any uh, question with that because ultimately all of us exist uh, for uh, that uh, litigant. Uh, as I said, uh, it is ultimately that litigant who resides uh, in the papers of our file. It's, uh, these are not simple papers. They are human beings in it. And we are we are for the purpose of delivering justice to them. So interacting with uh, uh, a litigant uh, or a lawyer uh, as we are doing it online, well, I don't see any difficulty so far as uh, well. All other uh, measures are taken care of. All other requirements are taken care of for the purpose of interacting. Uh, for the purpose of the cause uh, and interaction, uh, a, a judicial officer would uh, be looking at and uh, can uh, reasonably do it. But yes, so far as your uh, initial comment was concerned about uh, the hitch on the part of uh, a particular litigant or a particular lawyer or uh, a particular advisor or for that matter anyone, well, uh, that is uh, a feature, that is a particular area of uh, challenge which is uh, being uh, uh, means dealt with by all of us uh, in in uh, in every form of uh, the functioning of the court or even uh, litigation or pre-litigation or the local adalat so there there could be again that is why well standing of a particular party his goals we need to well uh, take into account we need to understand and thereafter look at uh, the possibility of settlement see uh, see it is this is like one party may be very, very keen to say and uh, would be projecting, has been projecting, it does happen, that well, sir, I am compromise karne ke liye tayar hu, lekin wo nahi karta. kind of, kind of these syndromes. Well, that is, it is, we can't talk in terms of man, that I, I am ready, when, when we are talking of settlement, it has to be always we that should be talking, and that we would include both the, both the disputants, that uh, the persons are standing on the different sides, unless they converse. So if a, if there is one party, there are all elements of Mr. Vik Mr. Vikram Gupta. If there are elements of settlement available, one party is absolutely keen to have the settlement, and another party is absolutely risen and clear that, well, come what may, I want a, a decision from you, sir. I don't want a settlement. And that is what his standing is. You may try to reason, you may try to talk, you or the, any negotiator, any mediator, anybody may try to talk. The person doesn't change his stand. Well, you can't stretch a thing beyond a point. That's what I indicated right at the beginning. Well, excess of anything would become fault. You can't go on, well, wasting your time, because your time, that is the court's time, it's people's time, sir, it is public time. Every single minute of your court, our court is not your or my time, sir. That is the time belonging to the people for whom we exist. So we we give a try to everything to the best of our ability. If it cannot happen, well, ultimately it is for us to proceed with it. A settlement is ultimately a two-way affair. It is from both the sides. So we try our best and uh, we have to leave it when the, uh, when the thing doesn't happen. Because again, I remind you, if it is not happening today, it may happen tomorrow, even after a statement of the plaintiff, the defendant may come and say that, sir, I want a compromise now. You will not say that Ki, tumne kal mana kiya tha, therefore I will not do it today. You you will do it uh, whenever it happens. So these are the these are the dynamic processes, sir. They keep on happening. Thank you.
Thank you, Lordship. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, Vikran sir has got the solution to his uh, question. Uh, I would request to Honorable uh, Mr. Justice Sandeep Mehta sir, sir ne side panel pe dala hai how uh, he could, uh, Lordship could uh, manage, uh, you know, uh, mediation or settle the dispute through uh, video conferencing. Honorable Justice uh, Sandeep Mehta sir. <laughs> Yes, please. Yes, please. I don't know. I'm not hearing anybody. I'm sorry. I'm not able to speak out. There's a network issue here. That's why I put in a chat. But in the previous local, we use this uh, uh, method, joint parties at three different districts. And managed to settle the disputes through mediation, which we conducted from Jodhpur. So this is this is a very easy solution. Then the parties are not required to travel down, and from the remote location we are sitting at High Court. And from the we we use the VC rooms of the district courts. The parties were called there, and we uh, intervened or rather mediated from Jodhpur and ensured dispute was settled. So what? Am I not going to saying this is a, a simple solution which has been uh, successful, sir? So, uh, yeah, yeah. So it can be, it can be. That is what I am indicating. These are these are the tools now at uh, at our command, and even 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 there is a development of the tools. You you find uh, update daily updates of your uh, softwares or not? You you keep on updating. See, the update is not for computer alone, sir. A daily update is for all of us, sir. And we keep on proceeding. Yeah. Two minutes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Agla question is coming from our Secretary of District Legal Services Authority, Bharatpur, Shri Ajay Gudara Sahib. I request Ravi Khan Ji to request that Ajay Gudara Sahib will be added to the panelist. My, my Lord, Honorable Justice, Mr. Dinesh Mahesvita, Judge Supreme Court of India, Honorable Mr. Justice Indrajit Mohanty, Chief Justice Rajasthan High Court, Honorable Mr. Justice Sangeet Raj Roda Saab, Judge Rajasthan High Court and Chairman Rajasthan State Legal Service Authority and other Honorable Judges, very good afternoon to all. Sir, my question is based on problem we face during mediation. Sir, as we see that when we have a mediator, there is a case refer to these cases which are family matters related. और उसके साथ कुछ कनेक्टेड मैटर्स और रिलेटेड मैटर्स भी होते हैं लाइक एज डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस केसेस तो सर अक्सर ये प्रॉब्लम एक मीडिएटर के रूप में मेरे सामने आई कि जब मैंने मीडिएशन शुरू किया दोनों पार्टीज का और उन पार्टीज से उनकी जो इश्यूज थे वो लिए कि क्या क्या इश्यूज उनके बीच हैं तो ये चीज भी सामने आई कि कनेक्टेड मैटर्स और रिलेटेड मैटर्स जिसमें अदर पार्टीज भी इन्वॉल्व है जैसे हस्बैंड के मदर फादर बहन उन वो वो डोमेस्टिक केस वायलेंस के केसेस में इन्वॉल्व थे वो केस हमारे पास रेफर होके नहीं आता अब एज ए मीडिएटर सर मेरे पास हमारे पास कुछ लिमिटेशन हो जाती है कि जो पार्टीज हमारे सामने नहीं आई हम उनसे कैसे कम्युनिकेट करें माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज सर कि यदि कनेक्टेड और रिलेटेड मैटर्स जिनकी पार्टीज हमारे सामने नहीं आई है हम उन्हें मीडिएशन में कैसे इंट्रोड्यूस करें कैसे आमंत्रित करें नंबर टू सर मीडिएशन रूल्स हमें यह भी प्रोवाइड करते हैं कि जिस कोर्ट से हमारे पास मीडिएशन रेफर हो गया है रेफरल जज से 
हम उनसे तो कम्युनिकेशन कर सकते हैं तो दूसरा मेरा प्रश्न ये है सर क्या हम ऐसे कोर्स जो कनेक्टेड और रिलेटेड मैटर्स को का ट्रायल कर रहे हैं क्या हम उनसे भी कम्युनिकेट कर सकते हैं yes please yes mr godara thank you uh, when again um, uh, may i request uh, the honorable judge in charge uh, um, uh, mediation uh, centers whether at jodhpur or the, uh, i i understand uh, there are judges in charge at mediation at jodhpur and jaipur right yes and, yes yes I, sir i i had the uh, opportunity to work for uh, few years as judge in charge mediation so judge in charge mediation may make a comment i'll, I'll come to it i i I'll, i'll i'll refer to this question yes please uh so far as uh, regarding sir uh, mediation in respect of the other courts are concerned uh, for the cases which are pending in the other courts are concerned as such uh, there is no such guideline but uh, at least if the court which has uh, referred the matter to the mediation uh for mediation that court can uh, uh, communicate to the other courts or if the particularly if the court has sent it for the mediation then i don't think so there is any problem the high court can always uh, uh, call for the other cases pending in the subordinate courts and ask the parties concerned to uh, the, get the matter uh, resolved through compromise even if the, some other parties are also there sir but so far as regarding uh, the lower courts are concerned certainly uh, the this can be a problem where uh, a particular uh, a case is pending in uh, a particular court and uh, other case is pending in relation to other relatives in some other court for that uh, i don't think so there is any such uh, method which can be uh, to solve this problem uh friends uh, uh this particular aspect uh, well uh, thanks to uh, thanks to mr godara i mean put uh, this uh, question uh in fact uh, there is not uh, much of a problem uh, uh, though it appears to be a problem uh, on the face of it, it appears to be having and some some issues of it own but before coming to that uh, uh, the other day when uh, Assam State Legal Services Authority has conceived this program, and uh, I have had uh, a an opportunity to discuss uh, the a, a few basics uh, with uh, Brother Justice Anjit Loda. Uh, I had a query because I remember as a judge of the Rajasthan High Court, uh, we were aware of uh, the alternative dispute. Uh, resolution rules uh, framed uh, by high court uh, in the year 2004 uh, if my understanding goes correct uh, maybe there were uh, certain proposals afoot uh, to have the fresh rules and uh, rules being amended uh, i think if they have if, if they have not been amended which i have not been able to find the, the amended rules uh, if they have been amended uh, I would be thankful if I am shown that, and if not, I mean, then uh, well, in my mind, this is high time that uh, we amend uh, those alternative dispute resolution rules because they were framed uh, way back uh, on 6 April 2000. They were notified on 6 April 2005. Uh, so much of development has taken place thereafter down the line these 15 years, 15 years. and uh, these rules they may require republishing this aspect or any such aspect uh, when when these rules are being amended or recast uh, these aspects uh, could definitely be taken care of or uh, provided for in uh, the rules but uh, well not existing the rules and in the present scenario so Mr. Godara and all my friends, well, I have noticed uh, well, mediation or any exercise of uh, the um, under you know, of any or mechanism. Idea is uh, to provide for a solution for all time to come for all persons 
in an effective manner where uh, the what we provide is uh, a resolution of a dispute uh, with uh, nobody winning kind of a situation and everybody getting satisfied where uh, wherever there are disputes uh, well uh, taking any dispute in the form of uh, a versus b or uh, one versus two may is not correct and we all know it uh, there are different interest groups uh, there are uh, agnets and conflicts uh, connected with a particular dispute so when we look for a solution even and it happens and so far as this mediation is concerned uh, we all understand mediation as absolutely a confidential uh, pr process uh, it is closed door process what the parties discusses with you what you discuss with the parties what transpires in the course of mediation well nobody is supposed to know well this is the confidentiality is the hallmark of mediation so in that process when when uh, you are uh, in the process of mediation and uh, the different sessions which you hold uh, it is not unknown that in those sessions uh, apart from the parties the correlated connected agnet cognates uh, the correlated persons uh, uh, you allow the parties to talk to themselves or to talk to you also <laughs> you even take note of uh, say for example this kind of uh, a, a matrimonial dispute there may be a scenario where uh, a, a particular person may not be having uh, much of the dispute uh, much of the much of the grievance against uh, the spouse uh, as a, 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 a as such but may be having a, a dispute or may be having a question mark about uh, one particular behavioral pattern or one particular uh, objectionable aspect uh, concerning uh, a person related with that spouse but they are uh, allowing the parties to come to a settlement if there is such kind of uh, a particular grievance syndrome remaining which could be taken care of by allowing the parties to talk a simple namaste or a simple talk or a simple cup of tea has done wonders but that all is permissible in mediation so uh, it is it is on the impunity of a mediator it is on uh, the a mediator is always supposed to think out of box a mediator that is what the training of a mediator has always been that you look for the solution beyond all the solutions which are apparent that is where thinking out of box comes into play so this is not much of the thinking out of box allowing a, a particular person who's who even if not a direct stakeholder in a litigation but a role player in some of the features of the call to have his own say in the matter or allowing a particular misgiving or doubt or dispute uh, or a grievance to be taken care of by way of mediation a mediator can always do it now so far as the other multiple litigations are concerned Well, live at different places are concerned. Once again, in a mediation, what you do is that you take the parties to the solution. You don't. You are not a conciliator. That is how we 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 try to differentiate and understand. You are not suggesting a particular solution. What you do is that you allow the parties to evolve their own solution. and to converse to a, a particular meeting point where the, by by which the solution comes up if that is the that is the uh, i mean uh, uh, that is what the mediation is meant for and that is what the mediator is working at then uh, you can allow all these aspects to be taken care of by the parties and you may find sometimes that the parties do come out of their own solutions but they after if there is a particular matter which relates to uh, domestic violence matter or which relates to any other matter which is pending in any other court well it could to my mind one of the solutions it could definitely be well there means indicated to the judge in charge mediation i i, I understand that there must be a, a mediation in charge in every district as we were having and uh, you must be having or of um, uh, the the person in charge mediation or the that like district and session judge for that matter who is the controlling authority on around your district or for that matter it could be indicated even to the high court because see any everybody all of us in whatever capacity we are working 
Well, the idea is well. When whenever we are looking at the ADR mechanism, all of us are tuned to see to it that if a if a if a solution or a settlement is a possibility, all of us individually and collectively works towards ensuring that solution. We are not standing at at a blockade. We always remove the blockade. So in a given situation or scenario. Uh, the blockades could always be removed with uh, the concerned uh, parties first, the concerned uh, court second, the judges in charge third, the controlling authority fourth, the high court for that matter in the final. So the methods can be evolved, but that will depend on the particular case. But again, reverting back to it, uh, I think uh, the point which is made by Mr. Godara could be taken note of by the authorities concerned and. Uh, uh, when the rules are being republished or made again, uh, I mean uh, made anew, this, these aspects could be taken note of and provided for in the rules. Thank you. Thank you, Your Lordship. Oh, just uh, I want to just uh, add uh, on the issue. Yes. Uh, yes. As suggested by Your Lordship, uh, this ADR mediation and conciliation rules of Rajasthan High Court was framed in two, uh, the year 2004. Uh, much water has flown thereafter and now these rules uh, need to be amended and we will be taking up the this issue uh, shortly uh, but so far as this uh, communication part is concerned communication of mediator with the court there is already a provision incorporated under the rules that is rule 22 that pro provides that mediator can communicate with the court and in what manner he can communicate that is also provided and second issue which is raised uh, regarding the mediator contacting other party so there is uh, no prohibition or inhibition under the law that the mediator cannot call third party also for right. for the purpose of uh, conciliation and settlement of the dispute right right, right. right. that is that is what we indicated right thank you yes thank you your lordship thank you lordship uh, next question is coming from Ms. Meghna Jain, uh, Joint Secretary Ralsa Jodhpur. Ms. Meghna. Good morning, Honorable Justice Dinesh Maheshwari Sir, Judge Supreme Court, Honorable uh, Judge, uh, sorry, a very good morning to everyone. I would, uh, my, I do not have a question. And today on this auspicious day, I would just thank all my gurus who are sitting here. Sir, we did not learn and listen from you uh, personally every time, but your judgments have taught us a lot. Sir, you, uh, today, sir, you talked about in your kind discourse, you talked about uh, right from the roots to the recent judgment about the uh, alternative way of dispute resolution and the synergy between uh, the adjudicating system. I do not have a question, sir. My, I have a little suggestion that uh, your lordship talked about the uh, statutory recognition of Lok Adalat. Uh, many countries like Ireland and uh, Singapore have already codified mediation as a law. So my suggestion and submission is that uh, we already in our country has uh, conciliation and arbitration as a codified law. As your Lordship said, uh, uh, this Lokadalat has got a statutory recognition. Uh, sir, is it not the time to talk to law ministry about the issues to make mediation a codified law? Thank you, Lordship. The, uh... Codification, thank you, Magnadiv. Uh, uh, see, uh, well, what uh, legislation is to come up uh, is an area, obviously. Well, uh, for uh, the other branch of the state, that is the legislature to look at. Uh, we find that uh, mediation, the word mediation, uh, got inserted in our uh, statute book. Uh, for the first time by way of insertion of the same uh, in section 89. But then, as I indicated, and that is what we all understand, 
there is nothing in as such in the name mediation well that is uh, extraordinary about well the exercise is though we have given the different processes for the purpose of well different procedures and different methodologies logics being there uh, the different names but uh, all said and done and and of course the methodology is being different because mediation uh, is a unique procedure where uh, uh, nobody suggests uh, any solution and nobody suggests uh, any uh, no, uh, i mean uh, nobody forces any solution what uh, we try is uh, that uh, solution is evolved by the parties alone but barring that particular one distinctive feature the other features are uh, all the features remain more or less the same whether it is conciliation or whether it is uh, low dollar even judicial settlement whatever we look at even in the ordinary course also a simple one word from you uh, from a judicial officer from you me any one of us will are bhai ye to itna sa mamla hai aap log settlement kyun nahi kar lete ho kind of this this particular statement or any anything any, anything of that nature are isme settlement ho sakta hai kind of well that particular impulse of ours well basically well triggers that basically that that element for settlement when we see and we suggest that thereafter it may go to mediation it does go to mediation we do go for the mediation but then mediation process itself is an structured process there are uh, methodologies for how do we go about mediation but thereafter inside mediation what would happen how we will do it uh, we are not having any rules exactly telling us as to well these are the things to be done or to not to be done in mediation well less well anything tomorrow happens when a litigant even after mediation well some element of dissatisfaction remains and your mediation exercise or mediation settlement is also challenged by way of non compliance of a so called a particular provision of the rule and then we go on debating whether that rule was mandatory or directory etc means well these are the these are the injuries and then, well these are the uh, things which we all are attuned to it they keep on coming in our courts so there is nothing which is uh, at present uh, working against uh, mediation as such otherwise uh, well beyond that whether a particular institute or the a particular methodology or rules or anything insertion in the existing institute is to be done or not well that we have to we have to leave it to the wisdom of the legislature and until this time whatever is available to us since it is, there is nothing of uh, anything that can be done or positive regarding uh, our ex, our uh, exercising any of these options is operating uh, we can uh, by by way of uh, of course uh, the relevant rule as brother justice loda has rightly indicated uh, the uh, recasting of the rules uh, is in the office uh, that could be taken care of uh, to be as at present that may suffice मीडिएटर्स at that time also uh, your views were uh, <laughs> that the uh, pre litigation mediation is a important tool for uh, uh, providing direct relief to the uh, society and i remember uh, that on many occasions uh, my lords were uh, having a clear view that this should happen uh, thereafter also all of us have seen the mediation growing in rajasthan uh, mediation center is working and it is working well Uh, but the pre litigation mediation has not been uh, has not uh, really i mean come in rajasthan whereas it is there in number of states so uh, what do you think sir that we should do to develop this particular branch of uh, mediation brother justice party uh, 
Uh, so far as free litigation mediation is concerned, uh, you rightly indicated uh, we had spent, uh, apart from those 40 hours of training, we have spent so many hours uh, uh, appreciating the beauty of this system of mediation. And uh, all of us, one way or the other, is uh, employing it uh, to the given situations and scenarios. Coming to pre litigation mediation, uh, again, there are two features uh, which uh, play a big role. Uh, as uh, you say, it is not taken up in Rajasthan. It is not only in the state of Rajasthan, but there are several other states and several other societies where the pre litigation mediation or pre litigation any kind of even pre litigation local analysis or pre litigation. Uh, anything which could be nipped in the bud or could be taken care of in the beginning. Uh, but that all depends on the nature of litigation and the nature of disputants and their goals. We have, well, again, even in our state, Rajasthan, well, the approach of a particular person, say, for example, in Sri Kanganagar about a particular matter or a particular cause, would be very difficult, would be way out different than an approach of a person down south in Baswada. We know it. Well, well, there, there are different approaches. Even towards the same kind of a cause, what a person thinks in Bikaner may not be applying in Bharatpur. That is, that is, that is, that is the vast variety. We, we, we in Rajasthan also, we have different approaches. And we, we understand. That is why uh, what what may work today, what may work towards settlement of a dispute in Siroi, as such may not work in Jaipur or vice versa. But these all are the features, friend. But then pre-litigation mediation, uh, pre-litigation, any kind of ADR mechanism is taking place mostly, mostly in core commercial world and that also in the matters where the parties to the litigation do feel like that going to the litigation is not going to serve the purpose of any one of them and it is best suited to work out a solution we 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 we, we remind ourselves so friends we look at a very interesting feature when we look at when we try to understand this ADR system as a whole, uh, we we know the government comes out with uh, some kind of amnesty schemes, sabka vishwas kind of scheme, right? Uh, one time settlement the banks come out of come come. See, this is also they were not strictly falling in the in our uh, section eighty nine. But these are all methodologies ultimately aimed at war. Well, aimed at, well, avoiding the dispute, well, finding some via media, some way out where, well, the losses or where the problems, well, the cause itself, well, goes out. Well, in, in, a, in, a, in a classical mediation also or a classical settlement also, what we say is that a person who is asking for 100 rupees, he is satisfied, okay, Baba, 90 rupees, they do khatam karo, okay, that kind of a thing, right? And, well, OTS or amnesty scheme or sabka vishwas or these kind of schemes, well, they are, again, an attempt on the part of the government to see to it that, well, the causes are finished, the person, pay, and the person also feels like it, that well, going into litigation, well, troubling himself for uh, years together, well, instead of that, spending time and energy both, time, money, and energy rather, the three things, time, money, and energy in the litigation, well, I pay, I pay off something or a part of it, and well, I buy peace. Well, these approaches, again, mostly in the commercial world, and mostly in where only and only monetary interest is there, they do come up in those societies they do come up but then when you have a litigation uh, we are talking of pre litigation we have a litigation of this nature where a person is not ready to give up four inches of the one particular nondescript uh, old thing of of his ancestors only for the purpose of well standing on a particular value or a system 
uh, you litigation, pre litigation, mediation, conciliation, sir, it fools, he comes and says, sir, mujhe kuch nahi chahiye, aap judgment de dee. That is, that is hot. So the approach would be different, sir. Pre litigation, mediation would take its own, pre litigation, any kind of ADR will take its own time. With the development of the society, now we are finding, I have seen the, the pre litigation uh, scenario, what was available in the state of Karnataka. Well, not necessarily the same was available in the state of Uttar Pradesh. The, 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 the approaches, the kind of litigation and the standing of the litigant that makes the difference. So in Rajasthan also, it will take shape, but it will take time. With, with, with the efforts of all of us and, uh, and the, particularly the commercial community, when it finds uh, that to be the best way of uh, well, saving time, money, and energy all. Well, it, it will take shape. It will go on taking shape. It will take time. Yes. Uh, I just uh, want to inform that uh, mediation in the commercial matters that has already started in commercial court of the state. Uh, presently, those are being taken up at the DLSs now, but now we are in process of establishing mediation center in the commercial courts itself. So this is one part. And secondly, pre-litigation cases, though through no mediation, but in Lokadala, thousands of cases of pre-litigation that have been taken up and disposed of even also, and which was a huge success. That's what yeah. it is. That's right. It is, it is taking shape, uh, what uh, Brother Justin Party is so, uh, so it will, uh, as, uh, as yeah. Lord Sif has rightly said, that it will take its own time. Yeah. Uh, we, we are in process and uh, we hope that uh, we will be successful. No, we did not. I not only hope, I am absolutely sure we will succeed, but it will take time. That is what I feel like. It will take time. Our, our society, we have to respect our society and the requirements of our society. So, the, let's go on proceeding on it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, as it is already uh, quarter past one, but we have few more questions, if lots of permits. So we can continue with the question answer session. Otherwise, that is that is that is only only honourable Chief Justice can say he he is the he is the he is the Chief Justice. I am I am just an invited guest. Nothing more than that. Hey, uh, I may be pardoned, my lord. Your lordship is not an invited guest. Your lordship is here as a member of the family heading right. the Rajasthan itself. So One we seek your it. advice. We seek your advice, and I think the questions that are being asked are genuine and it helps in many regards to clear several doubts. So if your Lordship can spare another 10 minutes, I'd be really grateful. No, no, we are, we are, we are here, sir. There, 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 there is, uh, means, uh, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for all of us to, to be yes, together. Sir. And, uh, um, I, see, I, I'm here till the time will uh, you, you don't, you don't, you don't <laughs> no, sure that before my Lord feels hungrier than already my Lord is, just 10 more minutes, I think we can close the questions and no. then the uh, secretary, member secretary will address the uh, we, just we 10 more take, minutes of questioning. No, we may take as many questions as, uh, as uh, required and uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, thank you, thank sir. You, sir. Uh, next question is uh, coming from uh, Ms. Reshma Khan, uh, ACJM JDA. I would request Ravi Kanji to make her panelist so that she can ask her question. Good afternoon, Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Maheshwari, sir, esteemed Honorable Judges and Guests. Sir, uh, in civil matters, adjudication through ADR processes provided under Section 89 further crystallized uh, by the AFCON judgment. But in criminal matters, adjudication uh, through ADR process, apart from Section 322, uh, 320 CRPC, it is observed that there is a dearth of uh, uh, edifice and guidelines. So my query is, can plea bargaining as enumerated under Chapter 21A be used as an ADR process for adjudication in criminal matters? Yes. And why is there a reluctance over the use of this concept in criminal matters? Uh -huh. Madam Reshma, uh, uh, pertinent uh, questions again. Uh, before uh, 
inviting any brother just to say on any anything on this aspect. Uh, I uh, intend to make a few quick comments. Uh, as we know, F on uh, again, uh, the Supreme Court uh, reminded us that uh, there are certain categories of cases which may not uh, be suited for ADR mechanisms and uh, there uh, the matters uh, having uh, criminal offenses involved may not be as such suitable for ADR mechanisms. Even we are evolving on that and that's why I indicated the decision of Evitel, the, later, the latest decision of the Supreme Court, which uh, gives us an insight where the Supreme Court has made a distinction to the allegations of serious fraud and the mere allegations and how do we differentiate it in that also. Criminal justice delivery system, well, it has its own reasons, it has own its own methods, and it has, well, its own requirements in the society as we started talking today. Well, you remove the magistrate and uh, the big fish will swallow the smaller one. So we need criminal and, and the society all through head. <coughs> Sorry. Always needed criminal justice delivery system. Now, as we know in uh, most of the cases, it's the state who is the prosecutor and the state is the prosecutor essentially as we were taught or we are taught uh, in our elementary classes because uh, anything of offense uh, doesn't relate uh, merely to the victim but uh, broadly largely to the society as a whole and that is why a state is the prosecutor oh, that is all said and done there are even in the criminal cases there are uh, minor cases major cases there are offenses where which were essentially of civil nature which uh, we have uh, with the later developments and the requirements of society we have with a classic example is insertion of a chapter in negotiable instruments act and essentially a species of the civil law well where we make the dishonoring of the check check bouncing cases as we know and offense and then we have provided for well uh, the methodologies to deal with those kind kind of cases which are quasi civil in nature if i can use that expression quasi civil there are litigations as it was being indicated uh, by mr gudara also that well there is a essentially a matrimonial dispute a civil dispute but well well, that particular package will involves in it domestic violence also, 498A also, 125CRPC also, et al. It, it happens, it does happen. But then, whether it is code of criminal procedure, whether it is protection from domestic violence, whether it is these are other, uh, well, means criminal offenses, uh, the offenses which have been provided for in uh, the Indian Penal Code or the special enactments. The concept and the idea is to maintain orderliness in the society. There, that is what the legislature has thought of, not providing for a settlement as such, but yes, it is compounding of the offenses. That is what the expression, the different expression is used. Compounding of certain of the offenses on certain terms and conditions and the norms. And again, that compounding has to be, well, at the satisfaction of the concerned magistrate. Now you, you are not, you are aware of the liberty available to the prosecution, even to withdraw from a particular prosecution and make a request to the magistrate. Well, we want to withdraw from the prosecution, but then, even withdrawal from the prosecution is not a matter of right. Well, it is ultimately your judicial mind that is applied to it. And then you find you may still refuse a particular uh, withdrawal from uh, the prosecution. 
compounding on the offense again, the, the judicial mind, judicial brain, a, a process of judicial determination has to go into it. That is, that is what the idea is, broadly uh, is speaking. But then there could be minor aspects and there could be quasi civil aspects where reasonably a settlement may not be counterproductive to the public interest. It is the public interest ultimately that is taken into account even while you are looking at the elements of settlement. Even while you are looking at, even, even in civil cases also, you find a particular kind of a civil case where there is a proposal for settlement. You deny that particular proposal for settlement if it operates against the public interest. You remind yourself of Order 23, Rule 3, well, even when there is a particular compromise presented to you, well, you do not, as a matter of course, put your stamp of approval on it. You have to be satisfied about lawful compromise. It has to be lawful compromise. Even under Order 12, Rule 6, where you grant a decree on admission of the defendant also, you may grant that decree. You ask yourself two questions, whether you are to grant a decree on a decree or a part decree on the basis of its uh, admission or not. The idea, friends, the idea, friends, is basically that, well, a judicial brain, a judicial process, a judicial determination is made before a particular cause is taken to a particular destination or a particular finale. In criminal matters, like these kind of quasi-civil matters, yes, like 138 negotiable, particularly we, when, we, when we talk of figures and when we talk of uh, statistics, uh, 138 well, hovers over our head of all of us. That, well, that is causing well, uh, well, a lot of space uh, of our all our energies. But then 138 is essentially, essentially a species of civil law in the sense it is, it is inserted also in a civil legislation, if we can bifurcate that way, negotiable instruments. Uh, it doesn't have direct correlation with public interest or a law and order. If, if a per person has given a, another person a check that has been dishonored, the person is uh, aggrieved of it, he files 138 with compliance of all that. There is an offense committed, you take cognizance of that also. But the person later on, the, the other person at fault comes and says, sir, I pay and I finish it. Now, here is a question for a judicial officer to ask that even after well putting this matter into the process of the entire prosecution, the evidence, the trial, I mean, the, the process of trial, what are we going to do and what are we going to render ultimately? Ultimately, what you provide for is well, punishment because a particular person has done a particular wrong, but at the same time, you compensate by way of well, fine with a double the amount of check. The idea is that a person gets payment and this person will gets a lesson. Now, this teaching a lesson kind of a thing by way of punishment, a, a particular person is well punished for a particular fault made. Well, that punishment, if it is needed for society's purpose, you provide for it. If it is otherwise not going to serve a society's purpose well, by way of these kind of settlements, you do provide for a settlement. And that is why in that context, a, a beautiful study is uh, that decision of uh, Dayavati versus uh, Yogesh Kumar uh, by Delhi High Court uh, delivered in 2017. And Delhi High Court dealt with this very issue as to why, as to whether this kind of 138 matters, well, whether they could be taken up for mediation or not. And Delhi High Court provided for a methodology as to how we will deal with it without conflicting with FCON, without well, doing anything contrary to what has been provided in FCON and without doing anything contrary to well, what has been provided uh, what has been provided uh, in our uh, statutes. And that is why, where it has been indicated in that judgment, and that is where the relevance and importance of the mediation rules or the ADR rules by the High Court would go a long way. And the High Court would be 
making a comprehensive rules uh, with reference to the its rule making power under the constitution of india it could be taken care of that particular judgment is uh, a study uh, we we can uh, we can definitely draw uh, out a few of the features from that decision and uh, will apply it of course with whatever modulation i am not commenting much about the judgment as such it is a, only a high court's decision but then it's a i mean decision of a different high court for that matter but then these aspects could be taken note of taken care of the other aspect relating to the plea bargaining as we find all of us find when plea bargaining was inserted in the code of in our system and in the code of criminal procedure uh, the people were skeptical about uh, the likelihood of its success in indian scenario particularly in the scenario of our country plea bargaining even in the united states or even in other countries is not necessary that well it is a success in all states for all time to come and as if that well every particular person or most of the persons who are who are having an opportunity of plea bargaining they would be jumping on a plea bargaining because plea bargaining essentially again plea bargaining also has its roots in those kind of litigations and those kind of problems which had been of such nature where a person has done a wrong but not that kind of a wrong which cannot be remedied by way of some kind of a solution but, but then the possibility of even having a conviction and even having a a, a punishment or a, a sentencing even for till the rising of the court may not be palatable to may not be acceptable to a particular class of litigant that is how it happens and that is why plea bargaining has uh, not taken shape well of course there are as as the commentators would say that the tardiness of our system the delays maybe the accused take advantage of that but i am not commenting on that because the so so far as this delay part is concerned uh, none of us is individually responsible but all of us are collectively responsible it is like that well and when when i talk of all of us every role player in the system has to work towards well expediting the things then only well we can we can deal with that's why i indicated that 2001 in gaya prashad the supreme court would say well the time is running out we have to do something fast otherwise and and the danger indicated is that when we do not get justice in court or law well, we we resort to extra legal means that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a serious danger and it's it's not unknown that when the people resort to extra legal methodologies which lead to other lawlessness which leads to other offenses so it is for all of us to expedite when we expedite the things and when the things are likely to happen in this manner that if today an offense is committed it's not that by way of certain statutes we we provide for that this particular offense decide the matter in 6 months or another uh, offense you decide in 6 months when this 6 months or one year becomes a part of our system maybe plea bargaining will start playing its role but uh, before that uh, when well, thinking that plea bargaining could be a solution to my mind as it until now uh, the experience has been plea bargaining has not served its purpose and uh, it is less likely to serve its purpose in the present scenario but it may serve its purpose in a modulated scenario in a different scenario that is what we can we can think of as the students of law as at present thank you thank you sir thank you sir now i think we should sum up this uh, webinar i would uh, like to request member secretary sir to render a vote of thanks honorable mr justice dinesh maithrisha the supreme court of india honorable mr justice indrajit mainti sir chief justice rajasthan high court and patron chief rajasthan state legal services authority honorable mr justice sangeet loda sir administrative judge rajasthan high court and executive chairman rajasthan state legal services authority honorable mr justice vijay vishnoi sir judge rajasthan high court and judge in charge mediation rajasthan high court jodhpur 
honorable judges of rajasthan high court respected judicial officers trainee judicial officers respected mediators ladies and gentlemen i feel honored and privileged to propose vote of thanks on behalf of ralsa on this ingenious webinar i am deeply grateful to honorable mr dinesh mashi sir for presenting over this webinar his lordship's address is always watch unique for novelty of ideas manner and approach it gave deep insights and unfolded many interesting facts once again i would like to thanks to his lordship for sparing his valuable time to enlighten us thank you lord i extend a very heartfelt word of thanks to honorable mr jasis indrajit mohanty sir we are greatly encouraged by gracious presence of his lordship we are immensely benefited by the inspiring address thank you sir i take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to honorable mr justice sangeet loda sir for gracing his occasion i am thankful for his lordship's motivation encouragement and support lordship presence in this webinar has immensely enhanced its importance thank you lordship i also wish to express my gratitude to honorable mr justice vijay krishna sir we are extremely grateful to his lordship for setting the tone of the webinar thank you lordship a special thanks to all of honorable judges of rajasthan high court who blessed us with their valuable time and gracious presence thank you my heartfelt thanks to all judicial officers trainee judicial officers and media mediators for their active participation last but not least i would be failing in my duty if i do not extend my sincere thanks to officers of ralsa without their cooperation this webinar would not have been a success thank you once again thank you very much thank you thanks sir thank you Namaskar sir. Namaskar sir. Namaskar sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, sir, and happy Guru Purnima to all of you. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Oh, winner.